Two-dimensional arrays are arrays that hold other arrays inside of them. Now, you can think of a two-dimensional array as an array having a row and a column. That being said, in order to declare them, we need to have a row and a column. So here I'm going to create a public int, which I'm going to name row, is equal to 6. And a public int, which is going to be our column, is equal to 5. So we are going to have 6 rows and 5 columns. One important thing to note here is that we need to make both of these variables static or otherwise this is not going to work. So public static int row and public static int column. Now in order to declare a multidimensional or a two-dimensional array in our case, so here I'm going to declare a private int and we add here our open, well, square brackets as usual, but we add a comma between here or inside in the middle of them, we add a comma, this is going to denote our, well, two-dimensional array. And I'm going to name this one numbers, and it's equal to new int, and here we need to pass our row, and here we need to pass our, not color, so we need to pass our column. And we have declared our multidimensional, or in our case, two-dimensional array, having rows and columns. Now, how can we process them? Well, we use a for loop as usual, but we need a for loop for the row and a for loop for the column. So here we can say for int row is equal to zero, as long as our row is less than our row with capital, so with capital R, so row, and we are going to increment our row. So here we are going to say row plus plus. So in order to make this not confusing, I'm going to say for int i, and as long as i is less than row, we are going to increment i. And here, what I'm also going to do is we need to write for int a is equal to zero, as long as a is less than our column, we are going to increment a. And let's say we want to populate our int here numbers with random numbers. So here we need to say numbers and here I'm going to pass i and here I'm going to pass a for the row and the column is equal to random dot range, let's say between 10 and 50. So practically that's that. And in order, well, I can, well, return here. So here I can simply say row so that we can, well, see that this is actually for row and column. But I just wanted for simplicity to set it at i and a. So here I'm going to say row. And here I'm going to say column with lower c. And here is also column. And here I'm also going to say column increment, well, column plus plus. And here we need to pass the column. So in order to make this understandable, so here, so here is r with, or excuse me, row with lower r. Here is row with capital R so that we know what's going on. So here we are passing the row and the column. So the element that's a row and the column is equal to random range. In order to process this array to print everything out, I'm going to copy and paste this one right here. And instead of reassigning, I'm simply going to say debug.log and I'm going to say, so here I'm going to say the number is, and I'm going to say plus and pass our numbers row and column. So here we are instantiating or well adding our random range number at the row and column and here we are going to print that number. So if we go back here in our Unity editor, if I run the game and I'm going to simply, well, move this window here so that we can see it more clearly. So here we have the numbers 38, 34, 30, 33, so on and so forth. But practically, we have populated our array. Now, in order to access a single element, so if we want to get only a single element, so here I'm going to comment this out, I'm going to simply say debug.log and here I'm going to say, so let me just use quotation marks, the number is and I'm going to say numbers and let's say we want to get the element that's at the index 1 for the row and index 2 for the column. Of course, keep in mind that these numbers that we pass here can be greater than these numbers here or otherwise we are going to have index out of bounds exception the same way we are having with a single dimensional array. So here I'm going to instantiate the numbers again using random range and I'm going to get the number that's at row 1 and column 2. 
So let's go back here and I'm going to run it now and we see that the number is 31. I can rerun it again and the number will be 21. Rerun it again, the number is 44 and we see that we are actually using our random dot range in order to, well, get or excuse me, to populate our array. So this is practically all, well, in short terms regarding our multidimensional arrays. So they are practically arrays holding arrays inside of them. We can go another dimension so we can have third dimensional arrays, four dimensional arrays. But a note here is that if you have more, more dimensions, it will get more complicated to process. So I will stick with regular arrays and in most cases or the far as I would go would be two dimensional arrays and I will not mess with three dimensions, four dimensions, so on and so forth. Because as I said, the further you go with the dimensions, the more complicated things get. So as I said, two dimensional arrays, here we have a row, here we have a column. We process them using a row and the column passing it here. And well, that way we can get the element that's at that row and at that column practically. And also here we can get a single element this way. So as I said, in short, this were two dimensional arrays.